I have this Amiga 500 that I bought off a friend who was the original owner from around 1990. The case was a bit battered, so it didn't surprise me that something was not working. Both the power and the drive LEDs are not working. The system booted fine off a of floppy though, so let's take this thing apart and fix it. The first thing I looked at was the LEDs. You can see the crack in the floppy drive LED that led me down the road to repairing this Amiga. I felt the Amiga had probably taken some shock damage, so I figured I should look for other broken components and solder joints. These LEDs are quite unique. There is actually two LEDs in each fixture. These two LEDs are wired in series. The drive fixture had a crack right through one of its LEDs, breaking the connection. To start, I bodged in a small value resistor to test the remaining half. I also reflowed the red power LED solder joints, figuring that might fix it at the same time. Sure enough, both LEDs are working. I was not satisfied with the look of the drive LED, however. I wondered if I could 3D print a replacement. After design and revision, here's the final product printed in clear ABS. I was quite satisfied with the result initially. However, because the LEDs were in series, meant that the 5 volt supply voltage is cut in half for each LED. That isn't enough voltage to light two green LEDs. Red LEDs actually would work because of their lower minimum voltage, but I really wanted the original green. The only way to accomplish this was to wire the LEDs in parallel. A resistor on each was necessary to step the 5 volts down to about 3. I hated to modify the original circuit board, but it's not like you can get original LEDs anymore. So here's a shot of the modification. I had to cut the trace between the LEDs, cut the trace to the 5 volt supply, and add resistors in parallel. Oh, and of course jump over a ground. Here's the other side of the board. The new LEDs are a bit brighter and washed out the red power LED. So to solve this, I just slapped some black paint around the sides to cut down on the overflow of light. Looks great! I believe that's three blinks. If you look it up on the internet, it says the watchdog timer failed. That end seems to indicate that the self-test failed. Actually, any of the blinking lights on the keyboard mean self-test failed. And also the keyboard doesn't work. So we're going to try to figure out what's wrong with it. Keeping in mind my earlier hypothesis that the Amiga took a fall, I decided to press on various areas of the circuit board while the Amiga was powered on to see if I could affect the blink. Sure enough, I could sometimes get the blink to go away by pressing on certain parts of the board. I decided to reflow all of the solder joints on the board to see if I could get an improvement. But first, I needed to remove the circuit board from the keyboard assembly. Removal of the keyboard circuit board requires Desoldering or heating up this corner right here because the darn thing is soldered up here in the top right. This is a V5 version 5 motherboard. I'll have to look. Let's see, what does it say here on this MOS chip? 88. 
So from that era. Also, the ribbon cable for the keyboard, you need to slide this. This, you need to slide it away from the board like that. Open it up, and then the, the connector comes right out of there. And of course, the other side, we have uh, three or four screws. Reflowing the joints did not solve my problem. After looking on the internet, some people suggested that replacing the transistor at position Q2 or the 74LS27 logic chip. I did notice pressing on the transistor changed the caps lock blinking, so I decided to start there. Well, that didn't make any difference, so I socketed the 74LS27 and tried to use another. Still nothing. I decided more pushing, pressing, and touching was in order. I spent a solid 10 minutes doing that until I was able to get the symptom to change by a feather touch to the underside of the 6570 chip. Further light touching and I narrowed it down to a specific area. It really seemed like there was a broken solder joint, but I had reflowed everything. I decided to go ahead and reflow again in that specific area using extra solder. And wouldn't you know it, the keyboard now works. Just to make sure, I pressed around the circuit board again for about five solid minutes. No more blinks. I believe my problem was inadequate use of extra solder during my previous reflow. It just goes to show the importance of doing things right the first time, and also not being resistant to thinking that you may have messed up a previous step. Anyway, for RetroFriends.com, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.